Do you need to install FlexTrack on your layout but you're not quite sure how to make the cuts? In this video, we'll look at three different ways you can cut FlexTrack so you can produce the size pieces that you need to fit your layout. So these are the three ways that I like to cut FlexTrack when I'm installing it on my layouts. So the first way is you can use a miter box and a razor saw, put the track inside of here. Uh, you get a nice smooth cut when you do this, but it is a little bit harder to use. Uh, there is also the risk because of the teeth on the saw, they kind of, you know, sometimes kind of snag on the track itself. You, can, you have a tendency to sometimes rip the rail out of the ties, especially with this micro-engineering track that has very small uh, spike details on the side, you can easily rip the track out of those using a razor saw. And so what I like to do a lot of times if I'm using a razor saw and a miter box like this is use a quick grip clamp and use that to help clamp the track and, and really the rails very tightly into here to help prevent them from kind of rotating back and forth when you're making the cuts. Uh, the problem though obviously is you, can, you can't lay this flat on a workbench but you can put it off the edge and still make a nice cut that way. And that is one way that you can do that. So we'll look at that here in a minute. Uh, the most common way probably, uh, and the way that I typically do it most often as well, is to use a pair of rail nippers. This makes cutting track very easily. You can just quickly make cuts through the track that are pretty nice, at least on one side. And you can cut through a whole, you can make a whole bunch of cuts very quickly. You do a lot of times do, though need to take a file and touch up the edges after the cuts are made. A lot of times they have little burrs or things sticking out that uh, might possibly cause a derailment issue. Uh, really the bigger problem though is just that uh, after you make the cut, a lot of times uh, the edges are a little bit too rough and it's hard to get the rail joiners on. So if you touch up the corners a little bit with a file, it, so it does make it a lot easier to slide that rail joiner on. Now the third way that I typically cut Flex track is to use a Dremel rotary tool, and this produces a really nice fast cut. Um, it also uh, tends to produce a nice cut on both sides of the cut. If you use rail nippers, one side of the cut looks nice, the other side, you know, on the waist side of the track, uh, has a very kind of jaggedy, uh, you know, mushy looking cut. It doesn't look very good. You have to cut it again if you want to use that piece of track. Um, the Dremel tool, though, produces a nice flat cut on both sides. Typically, it produces the nicest cut. Um, in terms of le needing the least amount of filing afterwards. So this is also a really good way to, uh, to make cuts. Uh, however, sometimes it's just not as handy. You have to worry about AC power. And so depending on where you're working, this might be a limitation just uh, you know, from that end. But they do, they do make uh, battery powered Dremel tools as well. So that is an option to consider. So we'll go ahead here and look at uh, using these three different techniques for cutting flex track. You can kind of get an idea of how each of those work and what the finished product looks like. So if you are going to cut flex track with a razor saw and a wire box, again, I do recommend that you use a clamp if you can, or some other device to help hold the track uh, from bending when you're trying to cut it. Now, of course, if you have a clamp in there, you can't obviously keep this on the uh, workbench easily. So you have to kind of extend this off the edge when you're, when you're doing the cutting. But then you can go ahead and do your cutting and get a nice smooth cut. Okay, so finally I made the cut through. Again, it is a little bit slower using the saw. The cut though does tend to be pretty nice and flat. Again, you do have to do probably a little bit of filing on the edges there, but it does for the most part work out pretty well. So that's one option for cutting track. Option number two, again, is to use rail nippers. And so that's my preferred method of cutting track. However, if you are gonna use the rail nippers, again, I do like to make sure I go ahead and remove the sections of ties that are in the way of where the cutting is going to be ahead of time. So you're not trying to cut through the plastic, which sometimes it can kind of shift your, your nippers in there when you're trying to make the cut. Again, to help prevent the track from twisting, I do like to use and clamp on a, uh, a quick grip clamp to help as tight as I can to help keep the track from twisting as you're trying to make the cut. Again, the rail nippers do have one side uh, where the blade is angled, the other side where it's flush. You wanna make sure the flush side is pointed towards the area where you wanna keep the track. So uh, the waist side gets the angled side and the side to keep gets the flush side. You make the cut perpendicular You get a nice cut um, with minimal filing needed typically, but you do have to clean up the bottoms usually a little bit. So you do need to have a nice flat file that you can use for cleaning up those edges, whether it's from the saw or from the rail nippers. And so you wanna make sure you get the bottoms 
the tops uh, if they need it, but typically it's not gonna be a problem for the top, it'll just be more of an issue for the sides and for the bottoms. So the third way I use to cut track is a Dremel tool and uh, using a cutoff disc on there, you can very easily go through the, uh, the rail. Um, however, again, these cutting discs do tend to melt the plastic ties. And so just like using the rail nippers, if there's a section that you know that you're going to be cutting through and uh, you know, you're know you not doing it with track that's already in place, I like to go through and cut away the ties where I'll be cutting. And so I'm not gonna melt the ties because then it, it just, it looks, you know, for the most part, pretty bad. And so I don't cut into the workbench, I'm going to use a scrap of wood, put the track on top of that. So when I use a Dremel tool, I'm not going to be cutting into the workbench itself and just into this scrap of wood if I cut too far. And when using the Dremel tool, it's important to let the Dremel tool do the work. Don't force it through too quickly, um, just let it easily uh, cut its way through the track uh, without really trying to force it through. So very easily you get a cut all the way through. Uh, I did actually on this piece leave a little bit on the bottom there. But this gives you again a very nice smooth cut and in fact for the most part out of the three methods this probably produced the cut that was the nicest in terms of needing the least amount of, uh, of filing. I mean for the most part it feels smooth to the fingers um, and I could probably go ahead and just use it as it is. I'll go ahead and touch up the corners a little bit just to uh, make sure there's no little burrs there. But this pr provides a very nice smooth cut if you go ahead and use a cutoff tool on the Dremel. Again, don't do it too fast, let it go through smoothly, and you get uh, a cut that basically looks like what you get on the end of flex track when you buy it fresh. And one thing with the Dremel too as well, because it is cutting straight through, unlike the nippers which produce one side that looks nice, one side that looks kind of goofy, um, you can actually use both sides of the cut and you're going to have a nice cut on both sides and so you don't have to worry about finishing the other side whereas if you use the rail nippers um, you're going to end up with one side of the track that looks you know pretty bad and so you're going to have to go ahead and make another cut there if you want to use that section of track. With the Dremel tool if you cut through the track both sides of the cut are going to look equally flat and good and you can use both of those sections without any further work besides a little you know fouling on the edges. The rail nippers are really fast and uh, you can get really nice cuts with them as well at least on one side and this is a really handy way to make the cuts. Using the miter box and the saw is probably the hardest way, it's also the slowest way. However, like the Dremel, uh, you do get a nice smooth cut on both sides and so um, you are going to be able to use um, both sides, the track on both sides of the cut without any further um, cuts being made to it. So anyway, those are three ways you can cut flex track for your layout. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite way of cutting flex track is and uh, what tends to work best for you. So anyway, that's all for now and I'll see you in the next video.